I wish to thank the organizers of the conference and the, and the great opportunity for sharing a Canadian forensic nursing uh, healthcare system. I also wish to thank my longtime mentor, Virginia Lynch, uh, for because without her, I wouldn't be doing this. Uh, I am the president of the Canadian Forensic Nurses Association. I uh, actually co-created that uh, organization in 2006 with three other individuals. I work as a forensic nurse uh, from, 2000, from 1992 until 2007, and I have been an educator and consultant since. Uh, uh, forensic nursing has changed Canada's healthcare, and the reason I know this is because I've been there the whole time. Um, just a quick overview first is that forensic nursing is the practice of, of nursing globally when healthcare and legal systems intersect. That was by the um, International Association of Forensic Nurses in September 2008. I am responsible for the word global. It was not in that definition and I insisted on that word as a member of the International Association and which I served as president in 2015. Forensic does come from the word uh, Latin word forensis which means on or before the forum. And right now we know that it means uh, legal or uh, related to the courts, which is now the accepted definition of uh, forensics within Canada. And I also humbly acknowledge Virginia Lynch's definition, which was the very first one uh, that she published in 1986. Uh, what makes a forensic nurse in Canada is that first there is a professional nurse education and added on to that is the forensic science education, much like the virtual autopsy one that we just heard. Uh, plus we've added forensic nursing education on top of that. Uh, what it comes down to is that a professional nurse, which is trained to provide care and treatment to victims, both of the living and the dead of violent crimes or traumatic events. And when we say victims, we both mean victims in the same sense of the word, but also perpetrators because Forensic nursing does not have any definition without victims and, and, and perpetrators of violence. They're one and the same. A perpetrator is a victim, a victim is a victim. Uh, a brief overview of the forensic nursing specialty in Canada. Uh, the timeline actually started in North America with Dr. John Butt who is a, um, a forensic pathologist in 1975 he hired nurses to investigate deaths in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Some of you are familiar with Dr. Butt. He is, he is actually, a, um, he was actually the um, medical examiner that was in charge of the uh, Swiss air disaster off Peggy's Cove, Newfoundland, uh, sorry, Nova Scotia in Canada. That was in 1975. Um, so that was the first time nurses and forensic came together in Canada. In 1986, Virginia Lynch presented at the Forensic Nursing Science Model at the University of Texas. And that is the beginning of the history of forensic nursing. In 1992, the International Association of Forensic Nurses was developed. And here in Canada, in 1992, it's interesting that the two, the two formed at the same time. Canada developed two sexual assault nurse examiner programs. I was fortunate to be the founder of one of those programs here in British Columbia, Canada. In 1995, the American Nurses Association recognizes the forensic nursing as a specialty. Huge milestone, which Canadians have piggybacked on. And in 2006, I was also privileged to be part of uh, uh, forming the Canadian Nurses Association, recognizing the Canadian Forensic Nurses Association, which today has just close to 150, 150 members at this time. We're still small. However, we are the only affiliate of the International Association of Forensic Nurses in, in, uh, globally. So what is the difference today from the early 1990s? Before, sexual, and my background is emergency nursing, so I was on the front line during these years. Sexually assaulted patients waited in acute care for many hours. We're talking anywhere from four to 12 
um, to longer. Males were rarely seen by any professional if they came forward and said that they had been sexually assaulted. Often they were examined by uh, professionals that had no ed or little experience in any kind of sexual violence, how to recognize findings, collect forensic evidence. That was not something that healthcare did and also documenting of injuries was at the medical level rather than the forensic level. Today in 2021, we have in Canada, um, sent major centers and, and some rural areas that have zero to 60 minutes response time for specially trained healthcare providers for all ages and genders when they report sexual assault or sexual violence. Eight of our 10 provinces have specialized programs and three have provincial networks. And I, this is my life story from 1992 to now, zero to 60. It does not seem like a lot, but here in Canada, it's huge. We also have courts that access ob objective evidence collected in the scientific manner of forensic science and nursing. And we also have community agents that collaborate before, during and after resources for the patient who has a sexual assault. Um, this is the biggest change that has been um, happened in Canada because even our public is now aware that there is a need for specialized healthcare providers. Um, before in interpersonal violence, uh, reality was that intentional injuries and unintentional injuries were not often recognized. So if a patient said they fell down the stairs, that was what was believed. Now we know the difference between injuries that happen intentionally mm -hmm and unintentionally. Also in, in the early 90s, violence was not considered a healthcare public health issue, which has been deemed um, with by now by uh, the World Health Organization. Um, there's specialized tools in emergency departments now to determine high risk interpersonal violence individuals. Also the cost of healthcare, uh, the cost of healthcare, um, in Canada was deemed in 2011 to be over $6 billion annually. Awareness and response for the, uh, sorry, um, uh, back, um, whoop, whoop, whoop. awareness and response for interpersonal violence is societal, healthcare and public. And we all also have specialized death investigation units who look specifically at interpersonal violence death and that is in Ontario, Canada. Um, in Child youth maltreatment, basically in the early 90s, these were undetected by healthcare providers. Um, injuries were deemed accidental, even if they were inflicted and data on health could health, um, health and childhood injuries was very limited. In fact, my pediatric text when I took nursing in, in 1968 and 69 was when I got my degrees, uh, was about a, a small paragraph on child injuries. That was it. Now we have mandatory reporting for child and youth maltreatment in Canada. We have specialized abuse teams that have formed and been expanded. And we also have specialized sexual violence teams, which deal uh, particularly with the sexual component of violence. It's not as prominent in rural areas. However, in the major centers, there is um, response teams that deal with uh, children from zero to, uh, to 19 years of age. Uh, in in care deaths is another huge change in, in the Canadian healthcare system. Uh, it, it, usually, the if it was in acute care, a psychiatric unit, or corrections, the scene or the body was often altered by healthcare providers, and and with good intentions, but they also hampered the investigation. Care facility deaths were often attributed to national natural causes were not investigated, and coroners in in Canada often do not have medical training, which means there are two, we have two systems. One is a coroner and one is a medical examiner. A coroner could be um, any number of individuals, not necessarily with medical training. However, a medical examiner is of course a medical um, professional. Today we have, just seen as preserved by healthcare providers who now know the difference between an investigation that is objective in, the, in care deaths we have an awareness of the high incidence of elder abuse in uh, care facilities and healthcare providers are screened uh, for um, criminal records prior to employment. 
And we have forensic nurse coroners and we have forensic death investigators which bring a healthcare expertise to the roles of, uh, of investigating uh, all deaths. Uh, this is a huge component where uh, the expertise of the forensic nurse is put to use not only uh, in the living uh, patients, but also to act as the advocate for those who have uh, died. Um, laws, regarding laws, healthcare providers have changed from not knowing what impacts their work um, to knowing that they have to deal with mandatory reporting, um, uh, professional practice, consent, and on the criminal laws. The difference between the criminal justice system and the civil justice system is very um, uh, much uh, in the mind of healthcare professionals now because we, and you know, forensic nurses end up testifying in court, which is, is a, a big step forward from the um, previous to 1994 when that did not happen in Canada. Uh, educational aspects and violence and trauma are lacking, we're lacking in healthcare, um, both in the basic education as well as the specialized. Today, uh, we have forensic education in violence and trauma. It's beginning to come uh, part of mainstream health education. However, we have forensic nursing education available in post-secondary institutions. Still limited, but at least it's there. Uh, and we have specialized courses for nurse nurses to become forensic nurse examiners, uh, and also in particular sexual assault nurses, as well as death investigation. So the big one of the biggest changes in the documentation, uh, as an emergency nurse in the, in the days I would write a cut to, the, to wherever, uh, there was little or little correlation between the mechanism of injury and the actual injury. Documentation was often incomplete, inaccurate, inconsistent, and not always usable in court due to its lack of education. When I say these, it's not meant to be a, a negative. It was meant that the educational standards at the time did not meet the forensic um, science and the forensic nursing and forensic medicine components that we know today. So now we have many, many um, forensically trained healthcare providers in physicians and nurses um, who document findings objectively accurately and completely. They testify both in civil and criminal courts with valuable documentation, which means that the courts now have an object uh, objective and accurate way of forming their judgment. And forensic nurses routinely testify in criminal justice systems in Canada. Um, when I look at the world of forensic nursing in Canada and I see the changes, I think of this author who is a, a Russian author who said, with the gift of listening comes the gift of healing. And what I also uh, means to me that the forensic nurses of today in Canada have the time, the skills and the ability to change the violence and trauma of the patients that they see into one that is a healing um, component rather than adding to their trauma. Trauma-informed care has become forensic nursing in Canada. Thank you.